Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I am doing this series, and the series is taking these incredible isolated vocals, and I'm doing an analysis of them and a vocal tutorial at the same time, and I'm picking up some of the nuances of the recordings and some of the stories behind the recordings, etc. Next up is Michael Jackson and Billie Jean. Before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel, that'd be super awesome. Uh, don't forget, that I have a singing course. The course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com. I have a free singing forum over there that has over 20,000 people and some excellent moderators that help people like you that are either wanting to learn to sing, new at singing, you might be already a decent singer or even a great singer. Uh, we've got some killer moderation where you can post your own videos, you can ask singing questions, post audio files to get feedback and interact with a lot of people looking to get great and hopefully to get somewhat as great as Michael Jackson. Maybe no one will ever get that great, but some good stuff. So anyway, now I wanna talk a little bit about Michael and the recording process. Now Michael spans a lot of years, man. I mean, gosh, by the time you know Billie Jean came out, he'd already had a gargantuan 25, 30 year career, 20 year career, 25 years or whatever, I was up to do the math. But you know, late 60s, early 70s, up and through the mid 80s. So you know, do the math yourself. Now, the interesting thing about Michael, and particularly this song or this era, was he, he liked to use a microphone called an S. M7. You guys can look it up. There's a lot of YouTubers that use this microphone, but it's a fairly low budget microphone for someone like, you know, uh, Michael Jackson that had Bruce Swedeen, who was the engineer. Uh, and, you know, you've got a Quincy Jones as the producer, like one of the greatest producers, at, um, you know, pop producers. But Quincy goes all the way back to like big band stuff. I mean, Quincy's been doing this a long time. So he has access to anything and everything. And he did his sister Janet Jackson. He's done gazillions of projects since then. So, so here you have the greatest studios in the world, you know, the greatest engineers in the world, greatest producers in the world, and you choose an SM7. Well, it comes to term, uh, come to find out, or it turns out, that that kind of also made a signature sound for him, right? And so as we listen to this, now I haven't really auditioned this recording that much, but I know kind of the whole story in the backdrop of this, um, backstory of this. And so um, the microphone is kind of tubby, it's kind of thick sounding, and there's not a lot of clarity to it, uh, but you can sing and do it pretty heavy, and you can also make a lot of noises and, and, and blow a lot of air and it, it's really forgiving uh, for that kind of thing. Um, and so I wanna kind of give a backdrop of that so as we're listening through some of this stuff, we can talk more about it. But let's just dive right into the track first uh, and we'll pick up some stuff along the way. All right, here we go. <laughs> she was more <laughs> like a beauty queen. Okay, so, so right at the <laughs> You know, you got, he's in it. Man, he's in it. Michael is like, he's ready to go, and he's got a lot of great energy. Um, now, let's quickly talk about that too. So, energy. I just came off of, um, what was it? It was More Than a Feeling by Boston, and I don't know when I'm gonna release all these. In fact, speaking of Billie Jean, I did a version of Billie Jean uh, with my student, Tori, and uh, I believe this will release after we release that. So, I'll try to put that in the description. If we have it, check out Tori's version. Nobody's gonna beat Michael Jackson, but Tori did a really good job. Uh, very different, her own thing, which was cool. But anyway, getting back to energy. So, energy, I just came off of doing More Than a Feeling, and We've talked about this before, but I'm gonna get a little more in depth in this right now, is that a lot of times we think of a track having all this energy and power and strength and force and all this stuff, and in fact, it's usually the band that's doing all the work for energy and power and you know excitement in the track, and the vocal might be laid back. And in fact, a lot of times too, with when you mix something, um, as they put the vocal back in the mix, it lets the band be louder and be more aggressive and more punchy and more energetic, and it makes you think that the vocal was that energetic. So when we listen to More Than a Feeling, we heard how laid back that was, we go, wow, that's nowhere as near as energetic as I remember it, because the track has so much sizzle to it. Well, in this case, actually, Michael is, he's the one giving us all the energy. You can almost see him dancing in the track when he does it. Let's listen to it again. And I'm just, man, I'm just getting started, so. <laughs> but it is Michael Jackson. It's worthy of taking the time to break this stuff down. So, check it out. <laughs> she was more like a beauty queen from a movie scene. I said don't mind, but what do you mean I am the one? Cool, now, he has a lot of chirp. <laughs> You know, she was more like a beauty queen from a movie scene. And he kind of chirps a lot in his sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, kind of stuff. So that's his thing. But um, but notice too, like he's got all the energy in the track. He's the one driving the track rhythmically and with you know his short vocal stabs that he's using in, in his phrasing. Who would dance on the floor in the round? She said, I am the one who would dance on the floor in the round. Now, did you notice it's kind of nervous? She, she, she said, I am the one who would dance on the floor in the round. You know, he's got this like crazy nervous kind of energy. Now, I don't know if he was taking drugs through the process of this. We all know that, you know, he certainly had some sleeping issues and took some drugs for that. It's how he OD'd, uh, you know, like Prince. Um, but we do know that there's a lot of personality coming out in the track. Like, I didn't know all those little gesticulations. You know, you can all, like I said, you can almost hear him doing the moonwalk dancing and stuff. He's just kind of doing the track. So that's kind of interesting. And his vibrato is, his vibrato is very a gelta or caprino. It's very, yeah, who, who would dance on the floor in the round? You know, he's got a very nervous, fast vibrato. She told me her name was Billie Jean as she crossed the scene. Then heavy hair turned with the eyes that dreamed of being the one. Who would dance on the floor and around? Now, do you hear what I'm talking about? Who would dance on the floor and around? About the lack of fidelity of the microphone. It sounds like there's paper over his mouth or something, or paper over the. Or, let me show. Let me show you what I mean. So, who would dance on the floor in the round? She said, "I am the one." Do you hear the clarity of my mic right now? Now, this is you know, it's a nice mic. It's like five grand or something. A little more than that, you can get it new. This is a Neumann M149, and I'm just using an Avalon 737, no, no, nothing special, but or nothing special in their world, nothing special. And so, but I want to play this back and listen to the fidelity, the clarity of my notes, and listen to his. Listen, check it out. The one who would dance on the floor and around. Hear that? People always <laughs> talk. <laughs> All those little noises. Now, the other thing is this must have dro dro drove uh, Bruce Wedeen uh, and, and, and the whole team crazy because, you know, um, in, in engineering, um, we try to be so sanitary in making sure that there's no pops, there's no, you know, they're called plosives when you hit the, when too much air hits the diaphragm and all this stuff. Um, and so maybe that's why they used an SM7 because Michael did use a lot of air. He was pretty nervous. You, you can hear him moving back and forth on the microphone and you know a lot of finger snapping and you can hear clacks of, of his shoes and stuff. So I'm thinking Quincy Jones probably just said, hey look, we're capturing his personality as much as we're capturing his singing and his energy and just that live feel. So just let him go with it and whatever happens, man, just make it work in the track. And you can hear that, but that's also what creates the cool energy and the liveness to the track that makes it so awesome. So let's continue. People always told me, be careful what you do. I don't go around breaking young girls hearts. And mother always told me, I'll be careful who you love, and be careful what to do. I could the lie become the truth. Hey, hey, hey. Cool. Now, one more thing. If you listen back to that, there's a lot of things that I want to point out. One of them is the constriction of air. And people always told me, be careful what you do. And he's like, really, really. <laughs> Don't, don't go around breaking young girls' hearts, uh, uh, uh. And he's cutting back all this air, right? Now, we've talked a lot about glottal compression, and I'm a big fan of that, and he's definitely using it, but he's constricting a lot of it in the throat, so it sounds kind of constricted, so it's real tight and pinched and squeezed kind of sounding, but that's also his style and his sound. Now, um, the other thing that I noticed is his pitch is spot on. On. The guy doesn't miss a note as far as intonation and pitch. And today, unfortunately, in today's world, there would be a lot of auto tune going on, but he didn't need it. He didn't need it because he worked his craft and it gave him the freedom of artistic expression to be more concerned and more preoccupied with his artistry than having to go back and fight for notes and fight for pitch. That's a really important po point. The other point is, is that his phrasing is a lot like stabs, like horn stabs. So I want you to think about this, and, and as you go through this, kind of go, yeah, you're right, they're kind of like horn stabs. Now, ironically, Quincy Jones was known originally for his big band era, and he, you know, conducting a lot of horn, horn sections, so I don't know 
if he played a role in that or if he just liked, you know, go, wow, that's pretty cool, Michael. But I know that Quincy goes all the way back to early Jackson 5. So there may be some collaboration on the phrasing of some of this stuff uh, with Quincy and the way he did it. But I want you to, beep, beep, beep. you know, people always tell me, be careful what you do. Don't go around breaking young girls' hearts. So the phrasing was really, really staccato and real stabby and a real, you know, but it was also very percussive and very interesting. So. Right? Now, here's another kind of interesting thing. Weird comment. Pretend for a minute that you'd never heard his voice or you didn't know who he was and we didn't have this pop track, this R&B, you know, kind of grooving pop track behind him. Some of it is not my son, right? He could actually probably have sung in a rock band or like at least somewhat some kind of a rock band. And what's interesting for me about that is we, we you know, we, what we do is we put people in such a box, you know, they're this or they're that, right? That if you really listen, he probably could have stepped in and sang some, not heavy, heavy stuff, but he could have thrown down on some pretty hard rock stuff if he was given like a rock background as a, as a bedrock or, you know, a, a background track. Uh, and the music bed itself being heavy guitars and stuff, and he probably would have fared pretty well in a rock band, but he's the king of pop, right? So let's continue. She says I am the one, but the kid is not my son. The kid is. For 40 days and for 40 nights, I was on the side. But who can stand when she's in the man? Her schemes and plans. Great phrasing. Go and dance on the floor and around. So now you can hear him, you know, da 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 da. He's working the mic. He's da da da. Who would dance on the floor in the round? She said, I am the one. Who would dance on the floor? You hear him, listen closely. You can hear him working that mic, man. It's pretty cool. Check it out. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> for 40 days and for 40 nights, the law was on her side. But who can stand when she's in the man? Her schemes and plans. Right? Come and dance on the floor and around. Right? So take my strong advice. Just remember to always think twice. Now, that's what I mean about the killer people. Remember to always think twice, whatever the line. Remember to always think twice, right? Kind of an unusual line. I know that's, I think, one of the things that go on in the song. Maybe you rehearsed it, but there's no auto tune, guys at all and he's singing this stuff spot on there's you can't find an out of pitch thing on this thing it's amazing and he's doing all this crazy stuff in the stabs and it's really hard to sing really fast staccato stab phrases um, you know do those kind of things like that and and have them be spot on pitch pitch wise i teach that in my singing course but especially in today's day and age there's not a lot of guys that can do this man do think twice cool stuff no 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 you know, no, 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 no. Right? I can totally hear him singing in a rock band, man. He told my baby we danced to three. Then she looked at me, then showed a photo. My baby cried, his eyes were like mine. Go and dance on the floor in the round, baby. Cool. Yeah, in the round, baby. Right? Where have we heard that kind of look before? Well, for me, I think of early Motown, man. It's, um, a lot of the riffs and runs that I hear these days with a lot of artists, they sound very rehearsed and very dairy. And by the way, not everybody is like this, but you hear these artists doing the same runs over and over again. I'm not looking to call anybody out, but they're very contrived and very rehearsed. This run to me sounds like early Otis Redding, Wilson Pickett. Um, you know, I mean, I can name uh, Al Green. It's got Aretha Franklin. It's got early Motown written all over it. Listen closely. And you can tell it's from his soul. It's just a spontaneous, just a quick, you know, kind of lick. And it's not some big rehearsing. That's not an amazing hard lick to do, but it's the soul and the placement of it. He doesn't overdo the licks like a lot of artists do today that are looking to get attention with, you know, you know, that kind of stuff. Listen closely. Check it out. A photo, my baby cried, his eyes were like mine. Go and dance on the floor 
in the round, babe. Yeah. In the round, babe. He doesn't go, in the round, babe. It's not like, you know, and again, I don't want to bust a lot of people, but Ariana Grande. I'll just use an example, okay, without getting too crazy. If you listen to an Ariana Grande run, she does the same run over and over again. There's a lot of artists like that. She's not the only one. And there's no swag to it. There's no ebb and flow to it. There's no sex to it. And I mean that like it's being sexy and, and there's no, um, there's no, uh, the way that the way the, uh, the 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 rhythm of it, the percussion of it happens, it's she would go uh, in in the round, baby, and he's go in the round, baby. Like I said, real Al Green. I can't believe that it's true. Oh, way that you make me feel, baby. Right. So he's got all this swag in it that's just really cool, and he does this throughout the song. So he's got so much energy and so much personality. It's just like oozing all the way through the song and they probably just like let the tape roll, let him sing it a few times, did a comp track and grab kind of their favorite stuff and it pieced it together. And that's another thing too, let me comment on that, is I haven't even heard him repeat the same thing twice and I haven't heard any cut and paste of any choruses twice. So like he's not cut pasting the first chorus or the second chorus, everything's different. So even though the song's long, you never get the, the feeling like, oh, I kind of heard this chorus again, oh, I heard the chorus again, where it's cut and pasted from one section to another. He's not doing that at all. Everything is different. So it's like watching him live. They just captured it and you get this feeling like, oh, I can continue to listen to this over and over again because it's always new. It's always different. It's always fresh. There's something uh, you know, unexpected right, to come at you. So again, really, really cool. Kudos to, to that era and everybody that did stuff like this, particularly Michael in this case. Ooh. People always told me, be careful what you do. Don't go around breaking young girls' hearts. I bust your kitchen stood right by me. I just a smell of sweet perfume. I this happened much too soon. She called me to her room. Hey, hey, hey. Now, I gotta back this up again. Do you hear all the energy in that track? The guy's on fire. I mean, I don't really think about it that much when I'm hearing the song go by, but he's driving the energy of the track, not the band creating all the energy and letting him lay back. This brother is just, first of all, he's driving the rhythm and the percussion and the phrasing of it. Um, he's driving the energy of it. He's got the ebb and flow working the microphone. He's got some distortion sometimes, distortion not sometimes. He's got the vocal licks and runs. He's got the tone. He's compressing the air sometimes. Sometimes he's using a lot of air. All this emotion that's in the track, you're getting this emotional guy just like bleeding out into the track, just leaving it all in the field. Pretty stinking cool, guys. I mean, is it amazing that we get to live in an era right now, we get to listen to isolated tracks of the most epic pieces ever recorded, and we get to take all the nuances and break them all down like this. That's pretty phenomenal. I'm but breaking young girls' hearts. A bunch of came and stood right by me. I just a smell of sweet perfume. This happened much too soon. She called me to her room. Hey, hey, hey. The Billy Jean is not my lover. Woo! It's just a girl. Now, was that punched? Hey, hey, hey. The Billy Jean is not my lover. Woo! It's just a girl. Yeah, so, woo! It's just a girl. You can hear a punch there, right? Kind of interesting. I would have never noticed that, right? But he did a woo, and they wanted to kind of make the track sound contiguous like it was one phrase. And that's fine. I mean, it's the first time I've heard that in the whole, the whole thing, right? Woo! Just a girl. Hey, just a girl. Claims that I am the one. Good tone. But the kid is not my son. The only person I've ever heard come close to Michael Jackson in this kind of way is Bruno Mars. And, you know, Bruno is sort of like Michael turned up a, a bit in some ways and not as cool in other ways. Let me explain myself. Bruno's got some killer songwriting going for him, you know, Uptown Funk being one of the greatest songs recorded in the last decade, you know, other songs like that, When I Was Your Man. And I've done versions of that. In fact, I did a version of When I Was Your Man. Um, I won't put that in the description because it's not Michael. Uh, and then I did uh, Uptown Funk. I did a version of that with my student, Tori. Uh, an interesting Uptown Funk, a little side note here. Um, Uptown Funk um, was actually, sounds to me like a ripoff of bra size 45. Look me up on it. It was an old Dr. Demento song. Bra size 45. Bra size 45. Uptown funk you up. Uptown funk you up, right? Check me out on that, right? But what was cool about Bruno is Bruno could sing a ballad. He can, he actually kind of has technically a little better, higher range voice than Michael does um, in this area. Now, Michael does sing high, but Bruno is more open and then, you know, same bit, but it feels just a little bit bigger. You know, or uh, I can't 
get your grenade for you. All those songs, you know, he's real more, a lot more open on the sound, though he sounds like Michael, he certainly has his own shtick. But where Michael excels is in his phrasing, in his energy, and his legendary status of just the maturity of his pocket stab percussive phrasing uh, is just one step beyond that. So you can tell Michael's a little more seasoned, um, at least at this up to this point, he's a little more seasoned in his approach and his musicality of singing and, and just overall musicality of, of, um, of everything, you know, in general, so. Now, can you guys picture this with me when I said horn stabs? So question. Can't you kind of hear like this was like a horn arrangement that he's saying? I'm not saying it was, but you can really hear that uh, very, very mature, very technical orchestrated kind of sound. That's what I mean by about the maturity of his phrasing and the percussiveness of it uh, being uh, really awesome. Claim that I'm the one, but the kid is not my son. No, no, she says I am the one, but. The kid is not my son. No. Cool. Now there's. See what I mean? He's just kind of in it. He's like finding something cool to like stab, put somewhere. Let's see. Let's go a little farther here forward. Here we go. Right here. Check it out. She says I'm the one. But. The kid is not my son. Da, da, da. So if I'm, yeah, 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 baby, yeah, baby. Right, it's got the Aretha Franklin kind of approach to it, which I just love. Another thing too, uh, I was gonna mention this is, um, as I'm listening back to this, I know Michael Jackson certainly had a lot of percussion or production in his music and Quincy saw to that, but there was a lot of space and a lot of air and a lot of live feel to it. And you just felt like you were, you are kind of just watching Michael the whole time. I didn't feel like you were inundated with a ton of extra vocal tracks and a lot of vocal production. And it's evidenced by here's a track, literally no reverb. I'm sure there's reverb on the original, but there's not a bunch of background vocals, walls of vocals coming at you, double tracking here, double tracking there. It's so live and so raw and so honest. And the personality of Michael Jackson comes out so much in it. That's also, I think, what helped make him the king of pop. The Billie Jean is not my love. She's just a girl who claims that I am the one. But the kid is not my son. No, 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 baby. Okay, and he kind of, he goes on, and there's a few more tracks like this that go towards the end. But I just want you guys to see how incredible these tracks are. I mean, just getting to break down all this stuff and hear how Michael actually did it. And and and, and also, too, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more impressed now listening to him than I was already impressed by him going, his pitch is killer. His energy is killer. His phrasing is killer. His tone is killer. Um, you know, uh, his uh, ebb and flow, his, his use of working the microphone is killer. His uh, uh, stab energy and just all of the, uh, you know, not not cutting and pasting choruses, but manning up and, and just singing the song end to end. I mean, this goes on and on, guys. So I'm loving what I'm doing. And uh, guys, I definitely want you to check out my next video.